So, I've been thinking. EVs are getting very inconspicuous these days, especially being silent vehicles. But what car design would I go for to hide in plain sight? Well, that would probably be this car right here, the Hyundai Kona 2024. While it may not seem like this 2024 model has changed much, there are a few distinct differences which we'll get onto in a moment. But what it does lack on the outside of the car will definitely make up for with advanced tech on the inside. So this one here in particular is called the Hyundai Kona Ultimate. Um, 65 kilowatt hour battery and the Lux Pack on this car, which I'm not quite sure what the Lux Pack means, but we, we'll maybe figure that out in a moment. One of the key differences now that with the 2018 model, they had a kind of speckled not grill, but kind of panel on the front. They've kind of brought that style back with this grill down here. So you may also notice this Kona is slightly shorter. If you put them side by side with the, the previous model, it'd look a bit different. They focus a lot more on aerodynamics, which is how they've managed to squeeze a little bit more range uh, out of both their, their battery pack sizes. Not, not the top of the range uh, in terms of the distance, but nevertheless, it's much better um, on this car. With this model in particular, it certainly looks a bit more rugged and a bit more sporty. Um, we've got some rugged wheels on there, which kind of a crossover from, I guess, sports to some sort of off-roading wheels in a way. Um, coming down the uh, side here, and I've got a few extra cut lines in here. I think that's really interesting because companies tend to not really do much with the side. So it's quite nice to see a bit more interest on, on the, uh, the side panel of the vehicle. Now let's take a look at the boot as well. If we can... I have a bit of trouble with boots on cars, you know. Can we put a timer on that? I didn't quite count, but that was a very long time. Anyway, in the back here, now there's not a massive amount of space. I don't think the Kona has been praised for its boot space, but there is a little bit extra underneath. I think one of the models used to have a little dinner tray set up in here, but they've actually kind of got away with that. It is very similar to the, the E Nero, if not the same. Actually, I think it's the pretty much the same. So perhaps a carbon copy with that one. Um, so a few other little changes on the back here, I think. So there's a little speckled pattern on here. I quite like the bottom trims on the back there as well. And there's a tiny sort of little spoiler shape there. Um, not, not much different, but they've made a little a few tweaks to, to the back of the car. Now, the Kona is said to be a family vehicle. Yeah, I can see that. I think there's plenty of space in the back here for, well, I can fit quite comfortably and I'm about six foot nearly, probably probably exaggerating a little bit there, just, just a little bit. Um, not much to say, really. There's a few nets on the back of the seats. Um, we've got heated seat buttons on the side. All I can look at is, yeah, it's not very nice to look at these, these headrests. They kind of look like computer chairs, as we kind of noticed earlier, but that's not particularly a pretty sight. You can't really see much out the front, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'm just being picky now. Um, also got two USB-C uh, charging ports in there. You've got a 250 volt plug. If I can get this up. Ah, there we go, slides across. So you've actually got a plug there, so I can charge my laptop in and work from the car's power. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is where, this is where all of the magic happens for this car. If you're not a fan of the outside, I think you'll be a fan of the inside. Start with the basics. So, obviously we've got adjustable ergonomic seats in here. All your buttons on here. Not much else different there. This is kind of the key part of the vehicle. Now, I think they've managed to pack a lot of tech into this car. I'll get onto ADAS in a moment, but let's have a look at some of the different, I mean, oh, that's where they, yeah, unfortunately that's where they fall down. Um, quite cheap, cheap plastics. And they have actually copied a few things from the Kia e Nero as well. As you can see, these little cup holders here, definitely a direct copy from the e Nero. 
other than that, like I say, more plastics. It is a bit disappointing when uh, you've got such good tech and a uh, nice looking at exterior because we have got very sort of basic interior on the inside. Now, maybe they might bring something out in the future, but this is the Lux model. So you probably should have a little bit more interesting stuff going on here. Now, I really like these seats. I absolutely love when a car has cooling underneath the seat. But more importantly, this you can actually control from here, just as you would with a heated seat as well. So you can have it on full, two, one. I think that's really important for, particularly to someone who's driving quite a lot. Um, I, yeah, I think that's probably one of the, the best comfort features for me um, when it comes to just sitting in the car. I love the fact that we've got lots of buttons. One of my bugbears when it comes to driving an EV is that you have to touch the screen for everything. We'll, we'll get onto that in a bit because I think the driver assistance really does help you when it comes to using the screen. Um, but other than that, I just love it. Like you've got that button for this, you've got home, you've got map, you've got everything you need on one button and one button only. Driving mode here, we've got like a little dial here. You can sort of hear the click. So it's very easy to determine whether it's actually worked or not. And you can also see that on the display. So one of the themes at the moment with this car is charging. Um, we've got wireless charger in the front there. We've got USB-C ports at the front uh, and a 12 volt as well, right at, the, right at the front of the car. Now in terms of in infotainment, I think this setup is actually probably one of the better ones I've seen, but I do think it is actually improved on some of the other cars that we've reviewed on on the channel um actually we've got um kind of a i guess a phone setup in terms of swiping for everything everything's kind of set up in the right place um so you know where it is you, you don't have to go pushing through different settings to try and get to stuff however you have also got if i can figure this out where is it apple carplay to be honest i spend a lot of my time in here particularly as an iphone user i think it's it's more beneficial for me to use this unless I'm playing around with uh, any of the car settings which you can find in that Hyundai menu there. As you can probably hear, maybe you might be able to hear it, I've got the enhanced sound mode on so it just kind of gives you a bit more of a driving sound. And that's one of the many features we've got going on. But first, I just want to tell you a bit about the ride. So there is quite a lot of road noise and you can feel a lot of the um, imperfections in the road. So it's very stiff driving. But when it comes to driving on most roads, actually the suspension in this is very, very comfortable. Now, one of the major problems that I have with this car is it's very noisy not it's not loud in terms of i mean obviously it's an ev it's silent when it comes to driving but there's so many dings and dongs and bings and bongs and all kinds of other tones going on when you're driving the most annoying one especially if you're coming home at night now i don't know it's a very happy sound but i don't know why that's annoying it just is and it gets better and those are only two of the sound effects going on in the car when you've got driver assistance happening. This thing's shouting, pinging, just doing all this kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll get onto that later on. Now I want to talk a bit about all of the driver assistance modes because Hyundai has actually incorporated a lot more in this new model. Now, we obviously mentioned the beeps earlier, so you get beeps for things like speed limit changes, um, what are the other ones? So if you're not focusing on the road, it will tell you that you're not focusing on the road. If you're looking this direction, for example, then it just knows that you're not watching. So it's got that element of intelligence to it. What are some of the other things? Um, when you're driving on the motorway, um, it can seem like when you first get in it, it can seem like it's trying to fight against you. But when you kind of get used to it, so all of the things such as uh, lane assistance, um, obviously your cruise or adaptive cruise control, um, distancing you from the cars in front. Um, but also, it, it, you know, once you start to get the hang of those bits, you can sort of seamlessly drive along without doing too much. One thing I've noticed with a lot of EVs is that steering assist is only useful on the motorway. And also it can be quite sort of tough on the hand. With this one, I've noticed that when you're going above, you know, you've got, you've got to be driving at least 30 miles an hour or more 
but you can use that um, steering assist while you're driving and it really does help particularly when you're driving along sort of windy roads and stuff you don't have to keep a tight grip of the steering wheel you can just sort of rest your thumb there I mean if you let go I actually counted this earlier for about 12 seconds you can let go of the steering wheel on the on the motorway before it starts to shout at you to tell you to get your hands back on the steering wheel now in terms of driving modes you've got four so eco normal sport and this is another car which has a snow mode and I'm not particularly sure what that's for. Um, you select those modes with this little drive mode thing down here. You can see it in big letters, so you can't get that wrong. Would have been ideal to have that on the paddles. That would have made it a much better experience. So as I mentioned before, we've got the different levels of regen. With these paddles here, you can switch it. The reason I couldn't stop as much earlier is because it was on level one. But you can switch it all the way up to the max level which gives you a lot more power. So you can actually use one pedal driving in this car. And it actually works really well for a lot of different environments. Now, one point where we're on the subject of regen braking, although it's very, very good, you do have to rely on it quite a bit because the actual manual brakes are quite bad. Oh, and one final thing. I don't know if you saw this earlier, but we do have a little sunroof. Oh, what's going on? No, 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 come back, come back. Oh, you have to press it again to stop it. So there's no two click. It just kind of does it all. That's really strange. Hmm. Blinding, but yeah. One other thing that's really important about the high-end Icona, this particular one, is the amount of cameras. They've got cameras for all angles and a view on the dashboard as well from all around the car. So you can get, a, I guess, a Google Earth view of the vehicle as you're, as you're maneuvering around. I've noticed as well, there's when you turn on some occasions, there are cameras that pop up in place of the dials on the dashboard, which I, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to simplify the fact that you don't have to look at the, uh, the, the mirrors on the side, but you're actually kind of in the way of those cameras. So they, they're kind of obsolete in most scenarios. All in all, it's not a thrilling drive, but I'm actually really impressed with how some of the functions work. Within the first sort of 10 minutes of driving, I managed to get the hang of all the different um, ADAS pieces on here. Otherwise, it's, it's a commuter car, it's not gonna give you much excitement. I mean, you can get a bit more excitement with the sport mode, but other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. So all in all, I mean, I came out here today very Shh. Things don't shut up. I came out here very skeptical about this car. I wasn't too keen on the exterior of the vehicle. And if you can put that aside though, what's going on in the inside of the car really is exciting. Particularly when it comes to driving on the motorway, um, really does a lot of work for you. It doesn't work against you as much as you'd expect it to. Um, but other than that, I think it's a fantastic car. Definitely something for um, a family or someone who doesn't particularly drive that often or isn't, isn't even confident in driving. I think this would be a, a perfect car for them. So with that said, let us know what you think in the comments. I've been Tom Swallow and this is EV Power.